Hi, thank you for the opportunity to present my report. Let me start with the introduction. My name is Maria Tkachenko. I graduated from Taras Shevchenko Kiev National University, where I studied the theory of literature and Ukrainian language and literature. After that, I enrolled in the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine Institute of Literature, where I am working on a thesis about the genre of industrial novel in Ukrainian Soviet literature. In this short report, I want to introduce you to some challenges that are faced by historians of Ukrainian Soviet literature. The modern historian of Ukrainian literature who has the task of studying, analyzing, and systematizing Ukrainian Soviet literature must solve many problematic issues. First of all, it should be remembered that the corpus of texts of Ukrainian Soviet literature is extremely large. This applies to both fiction texts and accompanying texts, reviews, critical articles, surveys, studies, and monographs. At the same time, all this volume cannot be perceived uncritically. The repressive character of the USSR in the literary process was manifested in the disappearance of a large number of names, the disappearance of certain texts or their multiple editing. Criticism and scholarly reception were also subject to the will of the party. So texts that Soviet literary criticism considered the best and most typical might not be so. It should also be remembered that critics and literary historians, like writers, were in a vulnerable position. A critic or researcher could be harassed, persecuted, fired, imprisoned, or, if we are talking about the Stalinist period of Soviet literature, even killed for a positive assessment of a certain author or a lack of attention to another author. Because the Soviet Union treated Ukrainians as possible traitors of the hints that the author likes his country or certain historical figures without manifestation of the author's loyalty to Russia or the Soviet regime was a topic that was to be named aloud as a false understanding of class or history. If the critic didn't condemn this, he was to be expected to face severe consequences. So. A researcher evades tons of fiction and analytical texts that lack artistic quality but are full of repeating notions that only under Soviet rule Ukraine and its culture literature can fully blossom. This means not only reading practically the same books or articles, but also facing frustration. An important characteristic of the literary process in the Soviet Union is that both Russian literature and Soviet Russian literature were perceived as role models. When we talk about the Soviet heritage, we should not forget that the Soviet Union consisted of 15 republics, each of which had its history and culture before joining the Union. Therefore, when working with Soviet literary criticism and literary history, one must analyze all the theses about the commonality of Soviet literature with Russian literature with particular care. If we return to Ukrainian Soviet literature, we must not forget that already at the end of the 19th century, we had socialist writers, early text of Ivan Franko or Mikhail Drahomanov and his circle of like-minded people who, however, didn't believe that the development of Ukrainian culture is possible only in full merger with Russian culture. Some of these also viewed Russian literature as an imperial one, others were developing independent Ukrainian culture without close connections to neighboring states. Therefore, the authors of our 20s could rely on the work of these authors and continue their tradition entering into a dialogue with Russian pre-revolutionary authors if they wished or not. So, for example, the view of Ukrainian Soviet literature as having originated with Maxim Gorky, Nikolai Chernyshevsky or Alexander Ostrovsky, authors who were retrospectively placed at the forefront of Soviet literature in the 30s, uh, see Catherine Clark's excellent work on the Soviet novel, is not worthwhile. 
Considering these aspects, contemporary Ukrainian literary criticism is faced with the task of mechanistic reading of the entire volume of fiction to understand what kind of literature the authors created and what themes, conflicts and heroes this literature had. Only after such a boring literary study will it be possible to calmly and confidently apply the latest literary tools for a qualitative analysis of this period in the history of Ukrainian literature. This is also the only way to find the best texts, authors, critics and researchers. By such a reading we will be able to find and name connections that Ukrainian Soviet literature has to previous Ukrainian literature, other Soviet authors and world literature as well, because all previous conclusions in this regard were made under totalitarian pressure during the Soviet time and imperialistic infringement. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukrainian literary critics and historians were happy to finally move away from social realism and its methods of literary analysis, so in the first decades of our independence, Ukrainian researchers returned to the Ukrainian classics in their read and analyzed using new methods. Feminist perspective, the colonial perspective, the construction, to name a few. Ukrainian literary studies of the post-independence era faced a huge number of tasks, though the lack of interest and desire to study the Soviet period can be fully understood. It should not be forgotten that Ukrainian literary critics of the independent period grew up and received their education in Soviet times, so their lack of interest in the Soviet period should be explained not only by the newly gained freedom, but also by the personal trauma of growing up, being educated and working in a repressive regime. However, over the past decade, Ukrainian literary studies have begun to return to this period. I will name a few new works that work with this period, trying to apply modern approaches to the analysis of this material. For example, Yuliana Fedorov's Socialist Realism Canon in Ukrainian Literature, its formation and transformation, Valentina Harhun's Socialist Realism in Ukrainian Literature, its origins, development and variations, and Natalia Ksyonsik's work, Desecration of Socialist Realism, Aesthetic in Ukrainian Soviet Literature in 1950s-1980s. A large body of scholarship on the Soviet period has been written in recent decades within the Russian Academy. However, these studies, even if they pose interesting questions using the latest literary tools, are limited by an imperial perspective. Russian researchers equate the Soviet legacy with the Russian legacy without taking into account the specific of each republic. Therefore, such studies analyze the Russian Soviet literary process and generalize their conclusions to the processes of all republics. In addition, there are no studies on the colonizing potential of Russian Soviet literature. The instruments of forced Russification of culture are assessed as natural and desirable mechanism of interaction between fraternal cultures. It should be emphasized that there were indeed natural mutual influences, but it is wrong to consider them outside the relations between the imperial center and colonies. Also, Russian researchers of the Soviet literary process often appropriate the authors of the republics as their own, analyzing them in the context of the development of Russian Soviet culture, without taking into account their influence of their own culture on the author's genesis. A good example of such appropriation is Alexander Dovzhenko, whom both Soviet critics and contemporary Russian studies speak of as a Soviet film director, a favorite man of Stalin, while ignoring his fiction written in Ukrainian language.
The work of Western academia with research on the Soviet legacy also requires some doubt. This scholarly opinion also tends to perceive the experience of Soviet literature as the experience of Russian Soviet literature. There are several reasons for this. First, contemporary Soviet studies in the West are based on the academic thought that was formed during the Cold War. At that time, Soviet literature was perceived as propaganda literature, which was regulated not by the laws of development of the literary process, but by the censorship of the repressive regime. Since the Western world has always known about the existence of the classic of Russian literature, the Soviet Union widely used such writers as Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, or Turgenev in its promotion of the Soviet Union's culture. Literary studies have always taken these names and their text into account, while many authors of the republics were not known to the Western Academy or were available only via Russian translations. Second, as public debates and professional discussions in the West after the Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine has shown the imperial nature of both the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union was not obvious and aren't obvious to many. Third, although all laws and regulations regarding life in the Soviet Union and its literature were made in Moscow, the implementation of these laws dif differed between the central and the periphery. For example, the Soviet period, a period of liberalization of social relations and increased space for artistic expression, lasted longer in Moscow than in Kiev. This should be taken into account both when working with primary sources, for example, decrees and laws, and when analyzing contemporary studies, since they do not often analyze the implementation of decrees in the republics. A great example of such an approach is Simon Attilio Belazis, The Shore of Expectations, a study on the culture of the Ukrainian Shizdisatniki, or Olena Palkos, Making Ukraine Soviet, Literature and Cultural Politics under Lenin and Stalin. Another crucial point is that the Soviet literary process developed under the direct influence of the party. Although the official ideology of the Union was Marxism-Leninism, policies changed extremely frequently. We can talk about the policies of Lenin and Zenep, then the Stalinist period, in which we can also identify sub-periods, the whole stagnation and perestroika. In each of these periods, politics differed dramatically. So, when we talk about Ukrainian Soviet literature or Soviet literature, which is already a complicated term because of the volume of literature it includes, we must clearly remember which years we are talking about. The novels I am studying illustrate well how the content of text changes depending on the year. For example, in novels written in the late 20s, during the first five-year plan, Soviet Ukrainian authors write about foreign specialists who were invited by the Soviet authorities to help set up a factory or establish a particular production. During the Stalinist years, references to foreign specialists disappeared. If there is a foreigner in a text from this period, he or she is necessarily a spy. Later, at the time of the World Festival of Youth and Students, the figure of the foreigner as the other, but not necessarily the dangerous one, returned to the pages of novels. In the last decades of the Soviet Union's existence, some novels were set abroad. For example, a young leading specialist was sent there to study and exchange experience. Of course, capitalism continues to be condemned, but the foreigner is no longer the enemy from the propaganda poster. In texts that I analyze, one can see how changes in the party's ideology influence the 
the discourses about the role of a woman in the fiction. Starting this radical and free from marriage and kids brave revolutionary fighter to the one who must take care of kids simultaneously working for the socialist future and ending as a shy, tender creature who wants to find love and marry. Another interesting feature of this literature is that there are different versions of the same texts. This phenomenon exists not because authors were revisiting their text and deciding to improve them, but because of the censorship and oppression. This situation is common for those authors who worked during Stalin's rule. The whole storyline, heroes and misanthemes were omitted. Sometimes it was made very straightforward, so the reader can feel the lack with character's motivation or logic. Therefore, the researcher must check all the possible variations to understand this period more profoundly. To sum everything up, researching Soviet Ukrainian literature requires a lot of careful reading. One must always remember that the literature process in Ukraine was not the same as in Russia or other republics, so the generalization should be omitted. A researcher should also pay particular attention to the time frame. Almost every decade, the Soviet Union faced a rather radical shift in policies and public discourse, so one should always note the date. Thank you for your attention. That that was all.